Mr. Investor Lot, welcome back to the channel, baby. Today, I want to revisit my conversation with Hankow. I wanted to talk about all of the applications of optical genome mapping. I was also sent a valuation model by Admiral Tweezers showing bionanogenomics possibly having the potential to reach over a thousand dollars a share, which I want to show to you today. I want to revisit when we went to the festival of genomics earlier on in this year. I remember them talking about a consumer demand growing for looking at a predisposition to disease. Let's also talk about what I've been up to with bionanogenomics have i been buying have i been selling selling you must be joking i want to talk about a wind that we can possibly catch flight on that is happening in the uk now and i think it's also going to happen over in america and maybe some other countries too eventually i could see this happening worldwide so first of all if you're new to the channel welcome my name is miguel and i look for the biggest the juiciest growth stocks and me and all my cowboys believe bingo gonna bring us some juicy returns uh -huh. Oh, we gonna be eating good. If you're able to support the channel, please click the join button above my head. I really appreciate all of you that are channel members and help support this channel, as well as people that send me donations. I'm super grateful and I really appreciate you guys. So thank you so much. But if you're unable to click join, just you hitting the like, clicking subscribe, dropping me a little comment means the world to me. Thank you so much and I'll catch you in the video. Get it. Okay, first things first, let's revisit just a few points from my conversation with Han Kao. Who is Han Kao? He was actually the founder of Bionanogenomics. So he was the founder and chief scientific officer and he was there for 15 years and three months. So I wanted to understand him. I wanted to figure out why he created Bionanogenomics and the applications. Today, I'm just going to be talking about the applications. When I hit this man up in the DMs, I spoke about Mars, Elon Musk. I talked about the Amazon rainforest. I just wanted to know about optical genome mapping and mapping out new species and organisms organisms which we are seeing with the vertebrate genome project right now i also asked him about disease and epidemiology i wanted to know about new bacteria viruses can we use optical genome mapping to map these out and look at our genetic risk of becoming sick and lastly this newborn screening thing it's becoming real now in the uk they're contemplating all newborns to be screened with whole genome sequencing but whole genome sequencing cannot reveal all of the structural variations finally i spoke about mental health too and i just wanted to see what he said he said yes long-range genome analysis technology could help on all the applications you mentioned above for reasons i said in a previous note currently sequencing alone couldn't find all germline disease causing variants or assemble new genome de novo accurately so let's break it down the germline cells these are the sex cells eggs and sperm cells they were demonstrated by many publications so I wanted to search this up. And in fact, we found one straight away challenges in identifying large germline structural variations for clinical use by long read sequencing. So check this out. They stated long read sequencing exhibits a high error rate in the range of 5 to 15 percent on a single nucleotide resolution. Pack biotechnology produces data of better quality overall, although still has a 13 to 15 percent error rate. Bio nano optical mapping can serve as a good companion to next generation sequencing technologies by providing a long range scaffold to de novo genome assemblies due to the error prone specifics of long reads optical mappings are mostly used in combination with either short reads or linked read data i then found this article from the genome web and this stated that pathogenic germline structural variants may be missed by some testing approaches here they stated that 80 percent of structural variations could have been missed by whole exome sequencing approach alone being used check this out this could have ramifications for some patients who have undergone hereditary cancer or cardiovascular disease testing so here it's stating that it could miss up to 80 percent of structural variations that's a lot and that's genome web there's an article on geekwire showing here as a metric 75 percent of structural variants that are present in the person's genome are missed by whole genome sequencing and so this july they also stated that whole genome sequencing for newborn screening this is what's been talked about they had a public dialogue as well and this may be coming to the uk so so if they're going to use whole genome sequencing as a technology to replace some parts of the National Health Service newborn screening program, if they're going to miss 80% of structural variations that are linked to diseases like cancer or cardiovascular disorders, then they don't have the full picture. So will optical genome mapping be also built in alongside whole genome sequencing? And well, in that very same month, July the 6th, feels actually a day before, Bionanogenomics announced a significant progress in China when WeHealth adopted the Bionano Sapphire system. But what are they using it for? Well, they've launched this service here. WeHealth announced the launch of its complete genome analysis offering optical genome mapping combined with whole exome or whole genome sequencing. Because together, I think you can build out the whole picture. During this structural variation symposium, they featured lots of scientific presentations covering a wide range of applications with optical genome mapping in genome analysis. Multiple presentations were delivered on reproductive health 
a significant need and opportunity in China with approximately 16 million births annually. So now I'm going to show you a model with a valuation showing over a thousand dollars a share for bio nano genomics. This is from Admiral Tweezers over on StockTwits. He wanted to share this with me and he said that this is just one model and you need multiple models in order to be a smart investor. You get multiple reasonable models and you merge them together to try and find the truth somewhere in the middle. So he told me to make sure you don't just take this model, you take this model into perspective and you put it together with other models in order to get this kind of holistic perspective on what the valuation could be. So Admiral tweezers said there are 164,000 hospitals globally if we got just a single sapphire consumable used at each hospital per day and if these were a hundred dollars a pop that would generate $16.4 million a day or six billion dollars a year at Illumina's PE ratio of 80 bio nano genomics would be worth 480 billion dollars 480 billion divided by 1.5 billion the current market cap remember this was in may when he sent this to me equals 320 and back in may it was five dollars 82 cents per share i think on those days 582 cents per share times 320 works out at 1862 dollars per share but hold on don't let me lose you there yeah so you guys must be thinking oh my god those are some big numbers this man must be high what is he smoking well, let's check out some of the factors he said. He said that's a big bunch of numbers, but let's tie it to reality. Suppose at some point it becomes clinically relevant to optically map the genome of every baby born on Earth. The UK whole genome sequencing all these newborns. Is he wrong to suggest that one day it may happen? I believe it may happen one day. And then check this out. Or how about every couple before they mate? And here's a third. For any condition, maybe hospitals begin collecting optical genome mapping data for reasons we don't know yet. So these three factors, I agree with him, they can all happen. Remember, optical genome mapping can help with so many different diseases. If we're looking here, it could also help in terms of Alzheimer's associated genes and Alzheimer's disease. And apparently this could be worth $25 billion by 2027 in terms of the global Alzheimer's disease market. According to the WHO, there's about 50 million people worldwide currently having dementia and Alzheimer's disease affects about 60 to 70 percent of them. There's a substantial opportunity for pharma companies to drive an increase in the wider Alzheimer's market by improving diagnostic capabilities. How can they improve diagnostic capabilities? Well, optical genome mapping, according to Bingo's case studies here, is useful in finding Alzheimer's associated genes and BioNano can also be used to map out any changes in these genes. In terms of babies that are born in each day, worldwide there are around 385,000 babies born according to this website babycenter.com. So if we take that, 385,000 times 365 days a year. That's 140,525,000 babies born every year. And if we times this by $100 a pop, if we were to use optical genome mapping alongside whole genome sequencing, say to build out the fuller picture, if optical genome mapping was used in the screening for every single baby, we are looking at a $14 billion market. So moving on swiftly, there's also this kind of consumer market. There's a demand to look at genetic predisposition for disease. And last time we were in the festival of genomics we heard them talking about it and nice guidelines were also speaking about how in america there's this huge consumer demand for example even just looking at your ancestry 23andme the company let's look here 10 million customer genome database ancestry i don't know if you know the company ancestry 18 plus million people were curious about where they come from their ancestors how much does this type of curiosity cost them 23andme dna ancestry plus trait service is 79 pounds and that's not even taking into account shipping fees because they add shipping fees on top so 79 pound is 109 united states dollar oh we going swimming in them dollar dollar bill y'all on the other side of the market as well let's talk about agriculture agrigenomics cisco trader over on stock twits make sure you follow him always comes out with some juicy due diligence remember buy an owner can do a lot in agriculture another 30 bundle purchase order with united states department of agriculture yep these guys just invested again in bio nano plant 30 genome bundle just remember guys this ain't our first rodeo with the u USDA. Mm -hmm. We were working on Project Trout. Rainbow Trout is the most cultivated cold water fish in the US. They were using us alongside Pacific Bioscience, Dovetail, and they were using bio nano optical map as well as Illumina short reads. So aquaculture is the world's fastest growing agri-food business. They want to utilize our machines to help them map out the genome of the rainbow trout. And they stated that they need this data because they want to use genomics and breeding programs. So they want to define genetic and phenotypic parameters that control complex traits such as disease resistance and feeding.
feed efficiency. They want them big juicy fish with no disease. Thank you, Cisco. Messenger of Moistville as well. Brennan, shout out to Brennan. Bionano will do to the medical field what Apple did to tech. So Messenger of Moistville over on Stock Twitch shared this. This is Alexander Hoishin, and he was basically doing some work with optical genome mapping or next generation cytogenetics. He went to talk at this event, the human genetics department Heidelberg and UNIL Symposium Vegas. What he found about optical genome mapping is it already competes with the combination of free routine tests now. It may replace cytogenetic tools almost entirely and remain very complementary to any sequencing. Then he said a full disclosure, BioNano contributed some reagents in the studies. Other than that, I have no financial interest, have not received any payment by BioNano and do not have any stock in BioNano nor any other genomics company. Funny enough, this is not the first guy to say that it may entirely replace cytogenetic tools. Many people believe that the Sapphire system is going to become gold standard and it's going to replace lots of these different traditional instruments and cytogenetic tools just because of the ease of the workflow as well as doing it for a fraction of a price. So if it does replace this cytogenetic tool market, we're going to have this juicy reoccurring revenue for many years to come. So let's talk about growth and how it's changed on chart meal. We're no longer 96% a year, but we're still going to be roughly growing on an average of 84% a year in terms of revenue, very strong revenue growth. When they're looking at the future years, they say within the next year, we're going to have 103% increase, then an 86% on year two, 87% growth of revenue in year three, and an 84% growth of revenue year five. Culminating in their estimate by 2025 of us having $172 million per year in revenue. But remember, it could be higher, it could be lower. I think it could potentially be a lot higher, all depending on whether we can get optical genome mapping built into guidelines if we can get insurance reimbursement but in the meantime this is what i've been doing bit by bit accumulation bingo cowboys if we go into them fours oh baby it's gonna get real saucy in here so i was telling everyone i'm still a student i haven't got that much expendable income um, i'm working just a little bit part-time but i'm mostly on placement in the hospital but right now i'm still continuing to stack as much bingo as possible before they hit this big revenue growth stage so bit by bit i'm just accumulating as much shares as possible when the stock is dropping in price i'm picking up some shares in the low five range if it drops into the fours i've got this oil play that's currently up quite a lot i'll probably trim some profits from my oil play just so i can accumulate more shares of bingo i'm currently sitting on just over 1k bingo shares but ideally i'd like a lot more bingo shares before we hit this revenue growth stage there's literally so many different catalysts and so many different industries we can be used in i'm super bullish on bio nanogenomics we've got this 300 mil plus war chest of money that's a whole lot of cash baby bio nanogenomics Genomics is constantly hiring as we can see here. So many different positions to fill. They're constantly trying to acquire the best staff possible. And if we take a look at the number of Tesla employees, if we take a look at this growth stock, back at IPO, they had 650 employees. And each year they continue to get the best talent in the business, try to get as many talented people as possible and grow their staff out. And now they're sitting on 70,000 employees, 70,750 employees. And back in 2010, when Tesla was $3.84, the result was was exponential growth. I think at an all time high, look, 22,800%. Is this gonna happen for our beloved bio nanogenomics? I'm prepared to wait and I'm prepared to accumulate as much shares as possible because I believe in this company. And with so many use cases and with bio nanogenomics being utilized in so many different industries and fields, could we see a single Sapphire consumable from each hospital every day at $100 a share? Could bingo reach over $1,000 a share? Let me know your thoughts and feelings. Hit me up in the comments below. And if you found this video valuable and entertaining, please click the join button above my head or if you want to send me a tip or donation i have a paypal link in the description box below but if you're unable to just you hitting like and click and subscribe means the world to me thank you so much for your love and support and i'm going to catch you in the next video always remember none of this is financial advice it's for entertainment only mr over and out baby